feel like frosty when I say that, right? You having a good birthday party so far? My mic working? Do I need something else? Is that working okay? You got it? All right. I'm very excited today. It's our birthday. I'm 12 years old. <coughs> I knew Gail would laugh. <laughs> We're starting a, a new series today, and, and I think it's just really fitting uh, for this series to begin with this message on this day. Uh, the series is called Jesus Questions. And, uh, you know, a lot of us have seen the bumper sticker or, or uh, heard the phrase, Jesus is the answer. And, and that's true. It's not, a, it's not a lie. But really, Jesus spent most of his ministry asking questions. Uh, in the Bible's recorded 307 questions that Jesus asked. And in this 307 part series, <laughs> just seeing if you're paying attention. It's actually a four part series. We're going to take four of those questions and we're going to open them up as to not just what they meant to those he asked, but what do they mean to us today? And what kind of truths do they reveal? Oddly enough, the Bible only records 183 questions that other people asked Jesus. Found that very interesting. I think once they started asking him questions, they realized that he was going to answer their question with a question. <coughs> so they got hesitant. But um, for our birthday today, I think this question is very highly significant and connects because the very reason Life Coast is here, the very reason that our families in those early uh, families that joined us planted Life Coast Church was because of this very question. And in Matthew 16, Jesus asked this question of his disciples. Who do you say that I am? That's why Life Coast is here, to pose that question to the community of Palm Coast and Flagler County. Who do you say that Jesus is? I'm going to read a portion of scripture to you in Matthew 16. It starts at verse 13. It says, when Jesus came to the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, who do people say the Son of Man is? And they replied, Some say John the Baptist, some say John the Baptist, some say Elijah, and still others, Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. But what about you? He asked, Who do you say I am? And Simon Peter answered, You are the Messiah, the Son of the Living God. Jesus replied, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for this was not revealed to you by flesh and blood, but by my Father in heaven. And I tell you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not overcome it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Father God, I praise you for your word I thank you that you sent your son into this world to walk with us as a man and to ask us questions that would make us look into ourselves, the very fiber of who we are and what we believe, what we know to be true, so that we might share the answers to those questions. And share those questions. So be with us today, Lord, on our birthday as we celebrate not just Life Coast Church, but the Jesus for which Life Coast Church exists. It's in his name we pray. Amen. <coughs> All right, so we have these questions that Jesus asked, and uh, people would look at him. And 
They'd want to answer the question. You ever been in school and the teacher asks a question and there's always that person in the class that wants to answer the question right away, right? They were the hand, oh yeah, I got this one, I got this one. And you loved it when they were wrong. <laughs> right? Yeah. And the teacher just looked at him and said, no, that's not it. And you went, that'll teach him to answer so quickly. How do you think they felt when Jesus started asking questions? And he would pose the question, and you'd sit there and you'd wonder, should I answer? And I can picture Peter in this, in this questioning. As Jesus turned and said, who are people saying that I am? We see that in, in, in uh, verses 13 and 15. He asked the two questions. First he says, when Jesus heard I turned too many pages. When Jesus came to the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked the disciples, who do people say the Son of Man is? Who do people say? What do you hear? What are they talking about? What's the, what's the buzz? What's going on? And so some of the apostles said, well, this, this is a safe one to answer because I don't even have to be right. I could just throw out what I heard or even what I think because it's a general question. So who do people say that I am? Some of the interesting answers, the, the questions that he asked of them. And they threw out some of these answers that moved them towards wanting to hear what Jesus had to say. You know, if you go to Word on Wednesday, I ask a lot of questions Yes. This is why. This is why. Because questions make us look into ourselves for the answer. You know, Jesus' questions were very direct. His questions were always direct. If you're keeping notes, that's your, that's your first one. They were very direct. <clears throat> he asked them, what are the, who do the people say that I am? And some of the answers were actually scriptural. They were recorded in scripture. But he always looked right at people and asked them a question. How many of you know people who are happier to talk about people than to talk to people? Jesus didn't do that. Jesus was direct. If he had a question, he asked it right to the disciples. He was intriguing. His questions were engaging. What do I mean by that? When Jesus asked you a question... You had to look into yourself for the answer. He didn't ask, if you notice, he asked very few yes or no questions. He didn't say, do you, do you think that Jesus is, is the Messiah? And they'd have gone, oh, yeah, yeah, that's what I think, yep, yep. He didn't ask that question. He says, who do you say the Son of Man is? Who do you say? So you now have to look at yourself and ask that question. These disciples had to look at themselves and ask that question. An engaging question. You know, I learned engaging questions in, in Bible college. When we, when we did an uh, evangelism explosion and you have to ask someone a question, you don't want to lead the answer to them. So if you're ever thinking of sharing Christ with somebody... Ask an engaging question. Don't feed someone the answer. Who do you say Jesus is? Or if you were to die today, would you go to heaven? It's a yes and no question. But they have to think about it. Would I go to heaven? Hmm. So if you're standing before God and he says, why should I let you in? How would you answer him? Essentially, Jesus is asking this question, who do you say that the Son of Man is? It's very engaging. It makes them think. <clears throat> and the questions were personal. Personal. What do you hear? What do you think? They have to be participating in what Jesus is doing. They had to be paying attention. They had to be listening. What do you actually think? And then they throw out the answers. The first answers were kind of funny. 14 and 16. <coughs> 14, when he asked the question, they say, 
Well, some say you're John the Baptist. And others say you're Elijah or Jeremiah or one of the prophets. Interestingly, just a few chapters before, Herod thought that he was John the Baptist. Kind of a reincarnation. Herod posed that in just two chapters earlier, that he thought Jesus might be John the Baptist, come back. So they, they probably heard that. And then Elijah, a lot of Israel, if you look at the Old Testament, Elijah and Jeremiah. Elijah in particular was brought up in a world when he never died, so it was highly possible for him to come back. And they're saying maybe this is Elijah, because we don't really know what he looked like. He lived long before us. And so, is he Elijah, is he Jeremiah? So they're throwing out answers. And then, the catch-all. One of them said, oh, uh, some say you're one of the prophets. So that narrows it down, right? Throw this general answer out to try to, try to get a right answer. They're trying to be that, that, that one that answers the teacher and gets the right answer. They're buckshotting out there. And then Peter. And I can picture him, he's usually the one as you look through scripture, who runs out in front and answers. This particular time, he hung, held back and waited and waited because I think he had his answer in his heart and in his head, but he wasn't sure if it was right. So he waited for those who like to answer first to shoot their answers out. And he said, you're the Messiah. You're the Savior. You're the anointed one. You're the Christ. You're the one that's come to save us. You're the son of the living God. And Jesus looked at him knowing that that answer could not have originated with Peter. He said, that answer came from my father who's in heaven. And that is key to understanding this question. And the the rest of the information that Jesus gives us after this. You are the Messiah, the son of the living God. Jesus says, flesh and blood did not reveal this to you, but my father who is in heaven gave you this information through the Holy Spirit. That's how you were able to answer this question. Then he talks about some keys. And this one throws people for a loop. He says, I will give you, I tell you, you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not overcome it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. What kind of keys are these? Now, some people believe that these are keys that were taken from Adam and Eve way back in the garden, that Adam had these keys to the kingdom, whether figurative, symbolic, or literal. And Satan, the enemy, tricked him out of them. And that Jesus was going to give these keys back. But I don't believe that fits the entirety of Scripture. I think what goes on here where he says, Peter, your faith in responding to what the Holy Spirit put on your heart, that's what revealed this to you. That's the rock that I'll build my church on. The faith of knowing who Jesus Christ is, the faith of being able to answer the question of who is Jesus, the faith that comes through the power of the Holy Spirit, those are the keys. In Matthew 16, 17, and 19, where it talks about these keys, I will give you the keys to the kingdom of heaven. And what is bound on earth will be bound in heaven and what is loosed on earth will be loosed in heaven. The interesting thing about the Greek structure in this, in this verse is it really the context should read what you bind on earth for this setting will be, will have been bound in heaven and what is loosed on earth will have been loosed in heaven. For us, this has already been accomplished. What you bind on earth has been bound in heaven. What you loose on earth has been loosed in heaven. Because the will be is the coming of the Holy Spirit that indwells all believers. 
This is an Old Testament context. It's sometimes a little difficult to track because we're in the New Testament. Because I am in Matthew, and right at the beginning of Matthew, it definitely says New Testament. But it's still an Old Testament era. The New Testament hasn't started. The church hasn't begun yet. The Holy Spirit hasn't come and indwelled all believers. So the keys will be given to you is the Holy Spirit will indwell all believers as they call on the name of Jesus. And the faith that comes from that gives you the ability to understand what has already been bound in heaven will be bound on earth through the faith as the Holy Spirit reveals it to you. And what is loosed on earth will be loosed Will be, what's loosed in heaven will be loosed on earth because you will already know it because the Holy Spirit will reveal it to you because he indwells you and he's connected to your spirit. The power and authority that Jesus gives from the simple answer to that question, who do you say that I am? If you can say in your heart, in your mind, and with your lips that you are the Messiah, you're the Son of the living God, you are the Savior, then the Holy Spirit indwells you. And what is bound in heaven will be bound on earth because you have the authority of the Holy Spirit living and dwelling in you. And you can bind things on earth because they're bound in heaven. Yeah, that's worth clapping about. What do you need to bind here in your life today? Do you need to bind an issue with anger? Do you need to bind an issue with resentment? Pastor Caleb a few weeks ago talked about unforgiveness. Do you need to bind that unforgiveness? Jesus says it's bound in heaven. And through the Holy Spirit, you can bind it here on earth. Do you struggle with addiction? You can bind it here on earth because it's bound in heaven. Because the power of the Holy Spirit can be unlocked. It's the key to a new life in Jesus Christ. What do you need to loose? What do you need to loose? Do you need to loose the faith that you've been holding back? You've been saying, I don't want my life to change that drastically. You gotta loose that faith. You gotta loosen it up. Let me tell you something. I was that guy. I was that guy. I didn't want to loose the faith because I thought people would think that I was loose in my mind. (laughs) But guess what? The faith that's been loosed in heaven through the power of the Holy Spirit, God allowed me to see what the potential was, what the vision for my life was, what my purpose was, and I could loose it here on earth because Jesus Christ said, it is loosed in heaven, and I'm revealing it to you through the power of the Holy Spirit, and your life will never be the same, and I say, take my life. Hallelujah, Jesus Christ. You might be holding back. You don't want to be that guy. I didn't want to be that guy, but here I am. I'm that guy. I will never go back. Because what God has loosed in heaven, he is loosed on earth here. And this is where I wouldn't trade this for the, for the world. If someone told me I couldn't preach the gospel of Jesus Christ anymore, I'd say, take my life and send me home. Because I can't. Not do it because it's been loosed in me through the power of the Holy Spirit. You've got to understand these keys. These keys that God wants to give you is the releasing of the Holy Spirit, the authority that he has in you. He wants to give you such purpose in your life. He wants to give you such authority over the things that are holding you back. But we're letting it be bound. So you've got to understand these keys are the makes the difference in your life. The truth is, you must first answer the question: Who do you say Jesus is? You gotta answer the question. You might be sitting here today and said, Oh, I've answered the question. I know. He's, he's Jesus. I know who he is. I believe in God. Stop preaching at me, bald guy. You know, 
about 75% of America believes in God. And James 2.19 says this. You believe that there is one God, good. Even the demons believe that and shudder. So it's not just about believing in God. The eternal question, the question that everybody has to answer, the question that everybody will come to in life or after life is who is Jesus to you? Jesus is the pivotal part of all of eternity, all of creation, all of everything from Eternity past to eternity future, Jesus is the pivot point for everything in life. And if you do not answer that question, if you just wait to answer the question, then you will be lost because you will not have released the power, you will not have loosed the power of life and freedom in your life but you will be bound to sin and death. The first keys you got to get is the truth about Jesus and who he is. You see, Philippians 2, 9 through 11 says this, Therefore, God exalted him, that's Jesus, to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name, That at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth. And every tongue acknowledge that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. You'll either proclaim it now or you'll proclaim it at the judgment seat before you're cast into an eternity separated from God. It will be proclaimed. And I offer to you a legit, true-to-life offer that you can proclaim that this morning and have life and freedom in Jesus Christ. Romans 10 says this, 9 and 10. If you declare with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For it is with your heart that you believe and are justified. And it is with your mouth that you profess your faith and are saved. I don't know where you are today. But you can have a spiritual birthday today. Just like Life Coast Church is celebrating a birthday today. You can celebrate your new birth in Jesus Christ this morning. Why does Life Coast exist? For this true to life offer, we offer you eternal life through Jesus Christ. You don't need to know all the theological truths. You don't need to know everything about everything. You don't need to understand the Greek. You don't need to understand the Hebrew or the Aramaic. You don't need to know any of that. Here's the only question you need to answer Who do you say Jesus is? Who do you say he is? Have you proclaimed it with your mouth? Do you believe it in your heart? Because if you haven't proclaimed it, then Jesus says, if you don't, if you don't profess, confess me before men, I won't confess, profess you before my Father. You need to confess it with your mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord. You need to believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead. That's what we're celebrating in just a few weeks. That he was raised up, conquering sin and death. Gave us the keys to freedom and life. That our life could change because of the power of the Holy Spirit. When you profess that Jesus Christ is Lord and believe in your heart, the Holy Spirit indwells you. And you have a power that you've never known before. The power to overcome sin the power to preach the gospel, the power to understand the word of God, the power to, imp- to, to encourage and lift other people up, the power to forgive because you've been greatly forgiven by the God in heaven, the power that you couldn't possibly understand without receiving the Holy Spirit. Jesus 
hadn't given the Holy Spirit yet. He said, you will get this power. But today, but today we know the Holy Spirit has come. We know that we have this power. We know that it's legitimate. It's the real thing. So I'm going to offer you today. This once in a lifetime offer. That you can have eternal life through Jesus Christ. You can receive salvation right here, right now. And we would love to baptize you out at the park, at the picnic, while we celebrate your salvation in Jesus Christ. That's why Life Coast Church exists. To love people into a relationship with Jesus Christ. Deeper and deeper and deeper. But today, you might just need to take one step. And that's a step towards that cross. And confessing with your mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord. Stand up with me. Stand up right here. <coughs> I'm going to ask you all to bow your heads and close your eyes. And if you want to pray a prayer to profess Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, if you've never done that before, I want you to just lift your hand up right where you are and hold it up. If you want to profess Jesus Christ as Lord, I see one hand right there. I see two hands. I see three hands. Does anyone else want to receive Jesus Christ for the first time? Just lift your hand and raise it up. You're professing before men that you want to be saved, that this is your day, this is your birthday. This is your spiritual birthday. You're a new creation in Christ. I'm going to pray a simple prayer, and here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to ask every single one of you to say it out loud so that those people with their hands up don't have to talk out loud by themselves. They're going to profess with their mouth that Jesus is Lord. Say, Jesus, I profess you as Lord and Savior. I believe in my heart that God raised you from the dead. Thank you for saving me today. Amen. 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 If you prayed that prayer today, we have a prayer team down here. I'd like you to come connect with them. Your other option is take a connect card and write on it, I received Jesus for the first time today. Give us your name and your information. Your other option is come see me at the park, man. I want to give you a great big hug. I want, to, I want to invite you to the family of God. We want to walk with you with your next steps. We don't want to leave you out there adrift because we're a family. We're a family. How many of you are ready to celebrate that people receive Jesus here today? There's a birthday going on. There's angels celebrating in heaven. This is one of the most exciting days.